now we have to start collecting impact test measurements. I want to note that the hammer comes with multiple tips, steel tip, plastic tip, sometimes with aluminum tip. For example, this is a steel tip and steel tip is used when you have very small diameter cutter which has very high natural frequency. We have 90 millimeter diameter cutter which has good overhang. I'm going to use plastic tip. So the hammer comes with a wrench. We replace the tip and also with the plastic tip the impact testing will be easier but the frequency content will be less. Now the computer is picking up the signals so you have to allow the computer to settle down and I push reset button to make sure that the software is reset. Now we are ready to collect hammer test results. First, we want to collect the measurement in the feed direction. Let's say this direction is the feed direction. As you see, the accelerometer is parallel and I have to hit the hammer right across the accelerometer. They must be in line. The first hit must be a bit strong to auto-range the data acquisition system. This was a bit light, so I'm going to reject that the software and do it again. Now we have to hit right across the accelerometer. And we continue because the computer knows the hit was good. Now let's say I hit double hit try again. By mistake a couple of times the computer said double hit try again. It automatically rejected the measurement. Measurement is completed. It said fit direction measurement is completed. Now I have to rotate the spindle 90 degree like this. It can be this way as well, if you can hit from underneath. But it's always easier to, measure, to hit from the top, provided that the accelerometer does not drop. It must remain stable on the cutter. It must be in touch with the cutter. Then we click start button again, and then repeat the measurement. You must make sure that you never hit it like this. It must be right across the accelerometer in the y direction because we are measuring the normal direction now. Measurement is completed. Now we have completed the measurements. If you look at the screen, we have red and the blue measurements. Blue one is the measurement collected in the feed direction and the red one is the measurement we collected in the normal direction. If you look at the top bar here, there are some important information to be aware of. The first one is time input. On top, we have the hammer impact. You can use the zoom button here, let's say zoom X, then zoom in you see this is the hammer blow it's like a half sine wave and underneath is the vibration if I push reset button here I go back then let me zoom again in the x direction I'm showing now the vibration measurement as you see as soon as as soon as 
the hammer blow is applied to the machine about almost one and a half millisecond the cutting tool vibrates on the machine these are the vibrations measured at the tool tap these vibrations contain all the vibration modes of the machine tool cutting tool, tool holder, spindle the whole machine tool is there we collected measurement at the tool tap because that's where we are cutting these measurements contain all the characteristics of the machine tool reflected at the tool tap. The next button here is magnitude and the phase. These picks, these picks represent natural frequencies of the machine. For example, we have one natural frequency at 470 hertz. That's probably because of the spindle. Then we have another one at 1300 hertz, another one at 2000 hertz another one at 2851 hertz higher the frequency is lighter the machine tool part should be for example i guess that this frequency belongs to the tool and this frequency may belong to the shrink fed tool holder definitely these two belong to the spindle and this is the phase. If you look at, machine is almost symmetric, although except at the first mode. The red has a shorter magnitude, as you see here, at the first frequency. That means at that frequency, y-axis is more stiff than the x-axis. Most probably because of the mounting of the spindle. But the other two are almost the same. That means they are coming from the tool and tool holder. Another important part is the spectrum. If you look at the spectrum here, this is the frequency spectrum of the hammer, which is on top. This is the frequency spectrum of the vibration, which is at the bottom. Typically, the spectrum of the hammer should not be zero when there are peaks in the vibration measurement underneath. So at this measurement, our measurement for this frequency, let's say 1400 Hz, is very good. It is not perfect at this frequency, 2000 Hz. It is really poor at this frequency. If we really want to make, capture this one, we have to change the hammer tip from plastic to steel tip. Next is the real and imaginary. This is a very useful graph. For example, when the frequency is almost zero and the unit is, here is micron per Newton, that means if I click here, I have 0 0.02 micron for one Newton of force. That's how we interpret this. And you will see peaks corresponding to natural frequencies. For example, if we take this one here, at the red one, we go back here. This part was real part of the measurement. This is imaginary part of the measurement because frequency response function is a complex number. And the imaginary parts are measured here. You see the display, real part is there. If you look at the x-axis or the feed direction, we have 0.06 micron per Newton height. Higher this amplitude is, more flexible the machine will be. Therefore, for a stiff machine, these magnitudes must be as small as possible. So if we compare x and y axis here, and the x axis, which is blue one, is 0 0.11 micron, while the y-axis is 0 0.06 micron. That means y direction or normal direction is twice stiffer than the feed direction. So eventually you will learn how to interpret these graphs. But I will repeat again, the important part is the magnitude here. Since the largest magnitude is at this frequency here, 
the machine will most probably chatter at 1,362 Hz. Because it's a low frequency, most probably that frequency belongs to spindle itself. Now we are comfortable with our measurements. We click the next button, either by pushing this button here or simply click on stability lobes. Now the software is calculating stability charts for the machine. If you look at the graph here, if you look at the graph here, it has a red zone and the green zone. Green zone represent, represents chatter vibration free machining conditions or sweet operating conditions of the machine. If we click these points here, regardless of the spindle speed, maximum depth of cut is about 11.7 millimeter. That means at any speed, Using this cutter and this machine, specific to this machine and cutter and the material, I can cut 11.7 mm deep. But if I increase the speed, for example, to uh, 15,000 revolution per minute, approximately, then I can increase the depth of cut to 20 mm deep much higher than 11.7 mm. Then, mit by material removal rate, became 2.4 liter per minute. I can also run the machine here. Reduce speed, at reduced speed, 10,387 revolution per minute. Then, my material removal rate dropped. So as my required power and the torque. If the machine doesn't have, for example, 16 kilowatt, then I better run the machine here. If I run the machine in the red zone, for sure the machine is expected to experience chatter vibrations, and that is dangerous, as you know, from the practice. You can always Remove the bar and look at the conditions here. And this is that bar here. Or you can click on display setting. For example, you can use snap to curve, show power torque graph, and put maximum spindle speed range of your machine to customize the screen for your needs. For example, now I click to uh, show power and the torque graph. Now I see the corresponding, for every point, I have corresponding torque and power. But that automatically calculates. If you click here, you already calculate automatically power and torque anyway.